Welcome to the Intune Guitar Academy. Today we have a special guest. He's appeared several times on the Intune Guitar Academy. Uh, Kelster von Schredster, also known as Kelly Coglin. Coglin, yep. Uh, we're at his house and we're trying out the new Epiphone, well, new to him. It's a 2013 Epiphone Sheraton, Sheraton two. Pro 2. So Just a 2, not a Pro. It's a uh, semi-hollow body, yep. arch top. Center block to keep the feedback a minimum. And the arch top means that the body is tapered up wi upwards. So we'll have a, we'll do a close-up view of that. That is perfect. Just like taper it down like that. Like and that. then you can see kind of a shape like a violin. Yeah. So that's yeah. the, the shape that it, that's where the term um, arch top comes from. So it's, it's got a shape like a lovely violin. headstock. And the headstock is typical of Epiphone. And really nice fret inlays that I don't believe you get on the modern ones. So the 2013 is the one to get. And it's uh, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. So it's kind of sh on the shorter end. It's got the typical Epiphone headstock uh, with the nice tree of life uh, design. Epiphone has been around for 140 years. Uh, we're recording this video in 2023. So this year is the 140th anniversary of Epiphone. It was a company uh, that was launched by Greek immigrants to the United States. They immigrated to New York City and they launched the company Epiphone. And since the 50s, they've been part of the Gibson wow. Corporation. So that's why there's a lot of um, commonalities between the Gibson lineup and the Epiphone lineup. Uh, Epiphone tends to be more of the budget friendly line. It's very similar to like Squire and Fender. Squire is uh, the budget friendly and the uh, Squire came about, Fender was trying to uh, take away the competition from all the Japanese companies trying to knock off the Fender brands. So they came up with Squire to be the budget friendly line. So Epiphone is kind of the same thing in terms of Gibson, but Epiphone makes great guitars. Uh, and Epiphone had been the, the uh, choice guitar for the Edge, and Epiphone has also been known for the Beatles used the casino. So George Harrison and John Lennon, and also from time to time, Paul McCartney, John Lee Hooker uh, was, um, his go-to guitar was the Sheridan or uh, the Epiphone. I don't know if he used the the, uh, the Sheridan, but he definitely used the Epiphone. And uh, the, the, casino. Edge, the Edge from, uh, from the U2. So from I U2. Mean, Epiphone has a great lineup of guitars. So enough for me, uh, let uh, Kelly uh, take it over. And well, what are your impressions of this guitar? Yeah, so here's the little bit of a story. I'll keep it short. Um, I had a Gretsch, uh, actually I've been going through a Gretsch journey. Um, started with an Electromatic, which is the second level in four levels of quality for Gretsch. Anyways, uh, that led me to a cheaper Gretsch and then a much more expensive Made in Japan Gretsch. And then I sold that, got another Electromatic Gretsch. But at the end of the day, the Electromatics, um, they just have this cheap feel. And um, I'm kind of known to dabble in, in, you know, pretty good quality gear. And I just didn't like the feel. It had a cheap toy, toy feel. It's the only way I can describe it. So I traded the Gretsch uh, about a week ago uh, with this guy for this Epiphone. Now I used to have a Gibson 335 that looked actually exactly like this, except it had a Gibson headstock. And I ended up selling that to fund my Gibson custom shop. And uh, I've been missing my 335 since then. And truthfully, the Gretsch was not filling that hole even though it was a semi hollow it had a center block it had f holes uh it just wasn't scratching the the 335 itch so as soon as i saw this i met the guy in in canada 
and uh, in front of the Tim Hortons on March Road. And I, I just knew immediately from feeling the neck, I knew this was a superior guitar, like much, much better made. And then I came home, plugged it in. I was not disappointed. Um, I do plan on replacing the pickups and I will show you why shortly. What we're gonna do is you're gonna hear the Gibson custom buckers, which are super, super close um, replica of the classic uh, 59 PAFs. Um, these are the, uh, what were they called, Frank? These pickups again, Pro, uh, they're not Pro Buckers or uh, something? Epi Bucker or something like that. They are Epiphone pickups. They're not bad. They're not bad at all. I, yeah, Pro Buckers, you're right. That's, pro Buckers. Uh, yeah. They're not bad at all, and I'm going to shut up. And without further ado, I'm plugged into a Fender Pro Reverb reissue. I'm going through an Exotic Effects uh, compressor and a few pedals. Uh, the uh, J Rocket Archer, which is a clone of the famous Klon. And then we're going to also engage the Dude, which is a Dumble in a pedal overdrive, also by J Rocket. J Rocket is my favorite uh, brand of pedals, by the way. They are just fantastic. Then going into a Jam Man Looper, and uh, that's pretty much it. So, uh, Dumble uh, makes great amps. Uh, unfortunately, the. Howard Dumble, yeah. Yeah, the uh, founder of Dumble just passed away. A couple passed weeks away, ago. yeah, a couple months ago. Oh. Last In the last year, let's yeah. just say that. So, so with just the compressor uh, engaged, this is without the compressor, by the way. Actually, it sounded less. That's interesting. Uh, we tried it with uh, your Marshall Plexi, and actually, the, the Fender sounds better with this this guitar. To me, it sounds yeah. Better. Having said that, that thing needs to be cranked. Uh, less, uh, and it's not the place to crank. It's not the place. It's a hundred watt hand wired Plexi. What Frank's talking about, and um, and I was running it through an attenuator, so it didn't sound that great with this. Uh, but but I knew this would be a fantastic pairing. Let's not kid ourselves. So, uh, actually the compressor's off right now. So this is the bridge pickup. Here's the middle. Neck. So going back to the middle. Bridge. Super quick swap now, just so we can compare. Well, I'll call them real PAFs because patent applied for humbuckers. Uh, these pickups alone cost about 700 bucks for the set, not cheap. Um, regarded by many as the best pickups out there. You'll notice, uh, well, I noticed a little more output overall and a little more clarity. So the, the higher output, I think it's, it's more due to Les Pauls just having more grunt overall. I call it the Rhino effect. <laughs> Would you agree, Frank, that it's a little brighter, snappier? Yeah, oh yeah definitely. So, here's the Klon. And then we'll go back to this guy. So you also have an SG. How do you compare the SG to the Les Paul? Well, uh, let's find out. So the SG has the 490T and the 490R. Gibson pickups, uh, they're hot and a lot of people don't like them. 
Um, I don't mind them, uh, but I'm so used to my Gibson Custom Shop, a super clear and articulate PAS, that I kind of want those pickups in all my Gibson guitars now. But, you know, it sounds good. You'll notice um, not as clear um, as the PAS. Not as snappy. So that's the SG. And of course the SG was the go-to guitar for Tony Iommi and for Angus Young. And I love SGs. Truth be told, that's my most played guitar out of all my guitars. And for a long time also Carlos Santana, but he's been associated with PRS for many years. So uh, I don't know if he still plays the SG, but every time I see Carlos play, he's always yeah. the, the PRS. Yep, yep. So back to the Sheraton, because this video is all about the Sheraton. <laughs> Not a bad sounding guitar, you know, like. So we're gonna uh, rock out a bit. Um... So both the J-Rocket pedals are stacked, by the way. So we might as well make this video about the Dude and the uh, Archer as well. So the J-Rocket Archer has, there's two of them. There's the silver one and then there's the gold. The gold is, to me, the, the closer replica of the famous Klon pedal that now sells for around four to $5,000, if you can find one. Um, they stack beautifully together. So, so this is clean. This is with the Archer. Kind of like a boost with a little bit of something. And then stacked with the Dude. The Johnny Mitchell version. Just like witches <laughs> at black masses. As you are born, you are not, but you're not. Evil player. minds of blood destruction. <laughs> something, something, death construction. In the field, the body's burning. While the war machine keeps turning. Death and hatred to mankind. Why is it you that brainwash minds? Oh, oh, 
We got to play that one in, yeah. in our band. We should. So, All right. So, you know, getting back to the to the Epiphone, I am absolutely thrilled with this guitar. It's got Grover tuners, by the way. So great tuning head. Stays in tune. With my eyes closed, it feels like I'm playing a real Gibson. Um, Let's get a close-up of those tuners. It's just fantastic, man. This guitar has blown my socks off. They're Grover tuners. You can buy them it's a little bit too close. easily online, anywhere. Okay. Uh, very well known. And this amp, really good. Love it. Fender Pro Reverb, 40 watts, loud as hell. We're only on number two right now on the volume. And it's got a beautiful tube uh, uh, tremolo as well. finger pick one summer when I was unemployed back in 1995 uh, I lost my job in a software company here in Ottawa and I sat in my backyard um, with this classical book a progressive learn to play classical guitar and it's something like 40 progressive pieces of classical music from Bach and uh, Vivaldi and all these famous uh, nice. anyways so I started working through them, and uh, I still remember some pieces like this. Uh. I don't recognize what it is. It's always a joy. Yeah. Um, Sounds great. Good. Here's another one. so inspiring the sound it just makes you want to play all day like that's what it's all about and man i never thought being the gear snob that i am that an epiphone would uh just really tickle me pink and remember, i'm just tickled I pink i remember you saying that uh, once you played a telly uh, squire telly and you said that was one of the best tellies you've ever played quite possibly yeah. quite possibly i don't know i mean now that we're talking about tellies why don't we take a super quick look at the J-Mascus, which is pretty badass as well. I played that a couple weeks ago and it uh, sounded pretty decent. It's pretty friggin' sweet. Twang for days. 
especially through a fender uh, fender end. Oh. Sorry guys. So let's take that off. Now you definitely want a compressor with a Telecaster. And you want it at least like this. Now I don't know how to chicken pick. I'm a chicken picker wannabe. Chicken picker. Like I'm still learning how to how to do the chicken. <clears throat> Players like uh, Brent Mason and uh, who's that other country country star? Brad Paisley. Brad Paisley. Yeah. Man, that guy can play like. sound man i hope that sound transmits through those cables and into uh into youtube land well i can tell you one of my cameras uh, i have it on the lowest possible uh, setting yeah it was still uh, in the red uh, so. it's it's I, it's I, it's pretty loud but it's not painful my ears aren't bleeding but i'm also half deaf so as you can see this this guitar rocks too absolutely rocks so happy i got it but uh, I digress, this was about the Sheraton, but it's turned out to be about the dude, the J-Rocket Archer, j Mascus Telly, and uh, you know, Gibson Custom Shop, Fender Pro Reverb. This is my pedal board that's just engineered for my Fender Pro Reverb. I've got a exotic effects compressor. Um, I have a J-Rocket Archer, which is a clone of the famous Klon Centaur, uh, which is more of a boost, uh, kind of a mid-focused bit of growl as well. This is the Dude. It's a Dumble in a pedal, uh, also by J-Rocket. This is the Jam Man Looper. It's a $100 pedal. Highly recommend it for people to practice with. Uh, uh, it takes a bit of practice getting the timing right, but once you do, you're going to find it quite easy. And this is the Strymon Flint, which um, is a reverb and tremolo uh, effect. You can have either the re just the reverb or just the tremolo, or you can have them both. Very popular pedal, all powered by a one-spot pro uh, power brick. So that cleans up your power? Thing. Yeah, it's isolated. It's a high-quality isolated power supply and, and, of course, a Fender Pro reverb. Can't recommend that amp enough. was brought to you by uh, Intune Guitar Academy and uh, yours truly, Kelster Von Shredster, gear, gas, and guitars. Check it out, folks. Awesome. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks for joining me on the Intune Guitar Academy. Thanks Rock for joining roll. us on the Intune Guitar Academy.